For someone who's studying Network Plus, one of the biggest questions I get is about subnetting, and it's about doing calculations that convert from binary to decimal and back again. And if you understand how to do this binary math, you'll be able to handle subnetting a lot better. So if, let's talk first about how you would perform some of these calculations in binary math. The first thing to remember is that a binary bit is either 0 or 1. It really can't be anything else. It's either hot or it's cold. It's on or it's off. We also combine these bits together into groups of eight. And those groups of eight we often refer to as a byte. You might also hear this referred to as an octet. That gets rid of a little bit of ambiguity because there are certain operating systems where a byte is different than 8 bits. But for the vast majority of our computing systems that we use on our Windows or our Macintosh or our Linux systems, they're going to have 8-bit bytes or octets that we're going to work with. And one of the easiest ways to understand this conversion is to build a conversion chart. So we have built one here on the screen. We've put 8 bits down here at the bottom. And above each bit, I've created a decimal conversion. And we start with the number 1 on the far right side. If we double that, that's 2. If we double 2, that's 4. 4 doubled is 8, then 16, then 32, and 64, and 128. And of course, we can keep going if we wanted to, up to 256, and 512, and 1024, et cetera, et cetera. This decimal conversion chart is one that we will use then to take binary numbers and convert them into decimal. Let's try one and see what we get. So here's our first question. What is binary 1000010 in decimal? So we need to take this binary number and convert it into a decimal number. So the first thing we'll do is we'll write out all of those numbers, 1000010. And then what we want to do is put our conversion chart right on top of it, the same one we were working with before, where we start with 1 and we double it all the way over until we've got it on top of each one of these. Now at this point, all that we need to do is start determining where is there a 1. And every place there is a 1, we're going to bring that number down onto this bottom layer. So we know there's a 1 under 128. All the rest are zeros. There is also a 1 under the number 2. So we've got 128, and then we add all of these together. 128 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0. So the answer is 130. And that's it. That's how difficult it is to take a binary number and convert it into that base 10 or that decimal number that we're so accustomed to seeing. Let's do another one. In this question, we want to take binary 1111, and convert it to decimal. And it doesn't matter whether it's all zeros or all ones. It's the same process every time. We build out and put all of the bits right there on the screen. We put our conversion chart right on the top of those. And then every place there is a 1, we bring the number down. Well, in this particular case, every single one of these numbers has a 1 associated with that bit. So we're going to bring down 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. And that answer then would be 255 if we were to convert this to decimal. And that's why you'll often see in an 8-bit octet, an 8-bit byte like this, the total number of different permutations you could have would be 256 of those. Because of course, you get to count the 0 as one of those options. So you'll have 0 to 255 as the total amount of numbers decimal that you could fit in an 8-bit byte. Now let's reverse this. Let's start with a decimal number and convert it to binary. And since we already know the basic idea of this, it should be relatively straightforward. We can't really write out the bits yet because we don't quite know what they are. But one thing I will do is, of course, put my conversion chart on the top. And then I'm going to put out to the right side the number we're looking for, which is 154. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is we're going to start way over here. And we're going to make a determination, is 128 less than or at least equal to 1? 154? Well, it absolutely is. 128 is definitely less than 154. So we're going to, to put a 128 right there, put a 1 in that mark. And so that is yes. So now let's take and subtract those numbers out. So what we've got less here is 
192 is 128 plus 64 less than or equal to 154. That's 192. Well, if I combine, if I had both of these as a 1 and I was adding 128 plus 64, that's 192. That goes way over 154. So we know that 64 could not possibly be one of those. So let's go to the next one, of course. If we take 128 and we added 32 to that, it would be 160. So is 160 less than or equal to 154? Nope, it's still higher than 154. So that can't possibly be a 1 in that particular mark. The next one down is 16. So if we add 128 and 16 together, we get 144. Is 144 less than 154? It absolutely is less than or equal to 154. So we'll stick a 1 there and bring down the 16. Now we at least have 144 we're working with. 144 plus 8. There we go. The 8 mark is 152. That's definitely less than or equal to 154. So we'll bring down another one for that. We're getting pretty close now. We're all the way up counting. 128 plus 16 plus 8 is 152. So now let's go to the next one, which is the 4 is 152 plus 4. No, that goes over. That's 156. You can almost already figure this one out in your head. Obviously, the next one down is the 2. 152 plus 2 is exactly equal to 154. That means we put a 1 in that mark. And of course, there's nothing left over. So that's going to be a 0 at the 1 bit right here. So here's the answer. If we take 128 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2 is 154, which also means then that the total binary representation of 154 is 1001. 1, 0, 1, 0. So if you do this process over again with any other number, you'll be able to build the exact binary representation of any of these decimal numbers. Now, we were working with 8 bits there. But sometimes you're working with smaller amounts. And if you have a smaller number of bits to work with, you obviously can't have the higher decimal numbers. For instance, if you only have two bits, your only options are 0, 1, 2, and 3. If you have three bits, then you have a little bit more to work with. You can at least go up to 7. There's eight places here, 0 through 7. And obviously, as you add on more bits, you'll be able to go up to larger numbers. There's 31, 63, 127. Obviously, with our eight bits, we were getting 256 total spots from 0 to 255. And of course, as I mentioned, if we had nine bits, it would be 512. If we went up to another 10 bits, it would be 1024, and et cetera, and et cetera. We can keep building that out. So it doesn't matter exactly what you're trying to fit into. You will be able to do this binary conversion to decimal and a decimal conversion to binary using these very simple processes that you learned in this video.